Today's adventure begins by walking close to this goose here at Lake Eola as the recording of the Saturday, November 26th, 2022. Chowing down on possibly some acorns or something out of this tree right here along Lake Eola, which has a Christmas tree over there in the distance because it is the Christmas season and that's a tie-in to today's video. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here with World of Micah. Once again, we are going to this neck of the woods. We have been here many times to document what has happened to the Ernest Safe's Christmas house, yep. but we have never done together, you and I, the, fil the complete filming locations. Well, right. let's, let's probably three quarters complete. We're not gonna go to each and every spot. We're gonna go to the majority of the spots from the 1988 Christmas classic. Yep. Now it can be watched on Disney Plus, right? Yeah, yeah. Because before, a lot of stuff, a lot of people might not have seen it, but now that it's touched on pictures, it's, on, it's online, anybody can watch it. Yep. I did the filming location 10 years ago in spring of 2012. You did them shortly, shortly yeah. after that, It was right? like 2015, I believe, yeah. So it's been a while since, and we have never been to all the spots together. There are some spots Micah discovered that I have never seen. Probably a couple spots you might not have known about from yep. seeing my video. Yep. So we're just gonna kind of tag team it today. That's it. We're gonna do this once again, 34 years after the film was released. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It is. 24 years ago was when I did, no, 20, the 24 year anniversary, yes. kind of, sort of, is when I did my video 10 years ago. So every 10 years ago, we should do this. That's right. It should be something we could do. All right, I'm inviting you to join me and World of Micah for the Ernest States Christmas filming locations. Shall you? It's a long intro. A little bit, yeah. I should also mention this is going to be filmed basically out of order. So I just want to show that you can go to most of these spots in one day. A lot of them are kind of in the same general area. A couple are going to be have to drive a bit too, but a lot of them are near downtown. But they're not going to be in sequence of the film. Starting off here with this scene, which is when Jim Varney, dressed as the older elderly lady, was walking up these very stairs into this building located at 215 North Eola Drive right here. And I'm not going to show, I'm not going to insert too many screen screen grabs and stuff, but I'll show a few just to kind of give a little little estimation. But I think the line, I'm just kind of going off of memory, was like these stairs might as be, might as well be Mount Everest. Uh, Is that the line? Yes. Might as well be Mount Everest. <laughs> and you were saying on the drive, as we were driving over here, we met up and we're, all, we're both driving together how this area of Orlando has kind of stayed the same where everything else has kind of changed. It's like a time capsule. And fun fact from here is where the house used to be. So it's just walking distance. So if you find a parking spot in this area like we did, yep. you can kind of go that way and that direction to where the house used to be. I'll see if I can find a photo from, from this angle. And Micah has pulled up a photo here. Now Jim Varney used this character many, many times in other, other specials that he did but he brought it obviously. I think as far as most popular and probably the most seen Ernest anything was Ernest Saves Christmas. And probably the, the, the best movie, best made money wise and production value wise of all of them. I kind of have to wonder, you think they did the interiors in here or that was on a sound stage? They might as well have done them in here, man. They might, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. There is a reception desk there, but it looks nothing like it did. Yeah, that's true. I've never looked in here. It's tough to see, because I mean, they probably filmed a lot of that on a, on a sound stage when he goes up and, and actually goes inside. But he did walk right up these very steps. Okay, this is kind of interesting. We were just watching the scene. This is the same railing as well. Not only the same railing that you can see him walk past. I know we're nerds talking about the railings, but this is screen used right there, as well as you know, it's a lawyer now, but they changed the wording on that. They just put a different sign over the top of those. And those are the same same little lanterns. Fun fact. Hey, just a couple blocks away on the corner of Higher and Washington Street is where Ernest House used to be. Now, I must say, it looks nothing like it did when the movie was out. And I've documented this through the progression of how things have changed over the years. Kind of sat in kind of a bad condition, really run down for a long time. And there were rumors they were gonna tear it down. And the rumors came true. The house is gone. 
Now the house next to it is from the same era, so it kind of looks similar to that time frame of when Ernest's house was here. The driveway, still the same driveway with all the cracks and it hasn't been replaced yet. Mike and I did an update on this, how many, six months ago, maybe? Yeah. They really haven't done much since then to this. I thought it'd be finished by now. But right here was the house. And then of course behind, so this building could be seen when the truck pulls out behind over here. And I think this building too. Yep. So the truck pulls out and then drives right down this way. The thing that gives it away is in that opening scene where the reveal of the Ernest mailbox right here, Ernest P. World mailbox was right here on the corner. And the yard was kind of decorated not quite as much as Pee Wee's house from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, <laughs> but it kind of had that vibe yeah. in a way. He definitely embraced the holidays. But when the truck pulled out, you know, it still has the cobblestone brick road here. And these two houses over here still look exactly the same. And there is kind of a, a look at what the house looked like then. There's Ernest's mailbox right there. Looks a lot different now. I don't want to spend too much time here because we've kind of dwelled on this over the past five or ten years but yeah we, just had to, we had to throw this in okay i noticed another scene before you see the houses i just kind of pinpointed out when the truck backs up there's another house for a brief moment that's shown over here that's been repainted but take a look at the staircase that wooden staircase that wooden staircase and the back garage area over there still looks the same too even though it's been repainted definitely been repainted but still has the angle here kind of the v shape or the a frame i should say and then the staircase right beside it. Okay, two more nerdy little things I've noticed here. So down here is the sidewalk that connects with another sidewalk that leads up to the house. But then over behind me, notice there's a tree in the yard, a palm tree in the yard that's been torn out. And there's a sign on that, but there's another tree that's in front of that other house on that corner. So keep those in mind. And here was where the sidewalk was that led up to Ernest. So the camera would have been over there on the porch area looking this way. So you go this way and that other tree I was talking about has been uprooted. It was right here. There was another tree right there. I wonder if you could see the roots. Who knows when that tree was ripped out though? No, it's, you can't. yeah, it's like hidden. It's under all this foliage. Hmm. All right, moving on. Still going along parallel to Lake Eola. This building over here, well, not this angle, which looks like there's a space available here. But this building here was used as some of the spots where they were running out from the jail around the back. And it was this parking lot, obviously it's been repaved that they ran out, Harmony, Santa, and Ernest right over here next to the truck. In fact, you can see from this angle, you can see the trees have grown up quite a bit, but you can see right there the, the buildings over there and they run out of this. This parking garage still looks the same all these years later across this road. And actually it's kind of way over here on this far end of the parking lot. You can see downtown skyline over there, but there was a vehicle here that was parked. They run around the vehicle. You see that it's a super zoom lens. So the camera was kind of farther back than where we're standing and then the angles like this with the uh, Ernest truck there. Now over at the corner of Orange Avenue and Pine. Now in the movie, there used to be a big building right here that has been burned down or torn down for many, many years. So it's kind of difficult to match up. The only exception of things you can match up are the very unique stylings of the sidewalk over there, which I'll show in a minute. And there was a restaurant over here, which used to be a sports memorabilia store. And that was, well, the restaurant in the movie, but in real, in the, Next to the restaurant was a sports memorabilia store for the Orlando Magic, and that is where Harmony Star tried to run out on her check right over there. So we're gonna kind of walk over to this section as well. And also, this was the corner where Ernest, who's driving a taxi, abruptly stops in the middle of the road. I believe it was like right about here. It's kind of like right in this section. They were kind of driving along this area, and then he hit the brakes right here. Am I right in remembering that? Yep. All right, yeah, so there's the awning over there. Tangeray's is what it's called now. And they just, it was even called it then because it's been open. Oh, it's been open since 89. That's interesting. So Tangeray's opened one year after Ernest opened in the theaters. This says for lease. Oh, that's interesting. And then this, 
is the this is the fire hydrant right here. Yep. So it probably really was for lease. Yeah. But you'll notice that side of the road, you can see very, very clear in the film itself, you know, these little kind of octagon sidewalk sections. Which those are original over there. This side has been redone. You can say this is like newer, newer style as well. If you're gonna run out on a lunch tab, make sure you do it when Ernest is driving by in a taxi. Perfect timing. So there's the building there that's been torn down. It looks like it's been a number of different restaurants, but she ran right out of here. And where that Orlando magic sign, what was it called, Orlando Fanatic? The fan attic, the sign was like up here. A-T-T-I-C, like it's an attic. So this would have been the this would have been the store here. Or no, this was the store. Probably here. This was the store, this is an apartment. And then this was where she comes out and runs off and meets up with Ernest in the taxi. And even dating back way before the film, this used to be Elijah Hand Furniture. So the information placard here. They make caskets. Also on Orange Avenue, they did a lot of driving scenes where they're in the taxi. And Harmony Star, you know, Santa, or Ernest tells Harmony that the, the other passenger, or Santa, was all kind of along there. Surprised? <laughs> Surprise, well, how's he say it? Surprise. Surprise. And in front of the Orlando Magic Store is the Delhi downtown sign, evidently set dressing or possibly there really was a place that was a deli down here. The camera would have been exactly where, where I'm at at this moment. And she was conversating with the waiter right here and then ran off. So this building is only used for a very brief moment, maybe like a three second clip, five second clip, where they're having the meeting with, with Joe at the top up here. It's a bank building now. A very unique structure just outside down. I mean, technically it is in downtown, but it's kind of separated from the other skyscrapers. And kind of the angle that they use is... So it's kind of like that, if I remember correctly. The beard grew back. We got to go by the museum also, which is where the, the air brake scene was yep. as well. This is where he's looking out the window and he sees the snow. And he has a change of heart. He looks out the window here and he's just like... He was right. Snowing in Orlando. Snowing in Orlando. That's the fun thing about Ernest Saves Christmas, that this is not a fictional town. Orlando's not setting in for like somewhere else in the US. Right. They actually do state it being in Orlando. And Joe's manager is looking at him and he's like, Joe, what is with you? So dramatic. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was a good that was a good impression. We drove east of town, east of Orlando, about probably 20 miles to Lake Mary. We are now at the Fox 35 news station. And I have to hand it to Micah on discovering this a couple years ago. He figured out that this was where Ernest pulled up in the Apopka, Apopka Snake Farm truck over here and where they were filming Christmas sleigh yeah. was inside there. Most likely filmed the interiors in there as well. So the front of the building looks a little bit different, but a few things match up, including the palm trees over here. And I'm gonna kind of walk around the perimeter of the property and kind of show some of the, the I don't know, we use the word stanchion. stanchion. The stanchion that matches up over there and the window and the door from that side. Poison, poison. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where the horror film be? I don't know if I could pick a favorite scene in the movie, but that, this here, is probably one of that character. Hilarious. Here's a little perspective of it. There's the door, bay door over there. They set up a little guard shack. It was stage five in the movie. That, of course, they've spray painted over that or painted over it, but it was stage five there. Of course, Santa Claus is in the back of the truck pretending to be rattlesnakes.
In fact, that pole there is where Santa ran into a another Santa impersonating himself. In fact, the middle pole there. That's right. That's where the truck was and where the, the showdown of the Santas took place. Right there, there's the pole. I kind of get the, try to get the correct angle also. I'll also show this. So when Jim Varney gets out, notice the two double doors on that one side and then this vent. Those are still there where he pulls out before walking into the, the open bay door as well. It looks like they removed the vent and placed it with just a regular window now. So the vent is gone there on the far left there, but those doors are still the same. And that pillar that Santa is having the meeting up with the other Santa is right there. That's it. It's got a lizard on it. Now you'll notice there is this kind of a reddish orange building that has been replaced where Jim Barney Ernest's truck was parked kind of in front of. I believe now there is an awning here. So this awning that's right there, that is kind of in the general area where it was, but the palm trees are still over there and there's the, the bay door. You gotta do, you gotta do your, gotta do the moment. You want a snake? You want one for your boy? I gave one to my boy once. Hammy! A <laughs> <laughs> rock of age! A uh, car movie, folks are. You want to explain how you figured out that this was the spot? Yep, so Orlando Sentinel had a um, newspaper article about Ernest and them filming in Orlando and they said that WOFL, Fox 35, used to show bumpers of Ernest in commercials. I don't know if he was promoting WOFL, Fox 35, or what. Probably. And so I got on Street View, I found this street, zoomed in on that building, and I saw that big garage door, and that was it. There's not he... many buildings that look like that. So for those who do not know, Ernest, Jim Varney, when he created the character of Ernest, him and John Cherry, John Cherry, who was the director and the writer and filmed all the commercials and movies, basically they started doing smaller markets. So they do a lot of stuff in the Midwest and evidently they were doing some stuff here in Florida as well. I remember WDBJ7, your hometown station, was one he'd always promote. So probably he did a Fox, was it Fox 35 or just back then too? Or? I think it just said W-O-F-L. W-O-F-L. Yeah. So that's kind of how, and that's probably how they got access because they were promoting this during the commercials. So they were probably able to use this as well. And Mike and I both realized there's a spot we can't really get to, but it's on Walt Disney World property. It is where the, the Ernest worked at the taxi place. Yeah. But you can't really get to it. It's kind of sort of backstage. It's where the cast members park for their job at Magic Kingdom. That's, that's where the taxi headquarters was. Yep. Oh, but also, by the way, Vern's house was on the former back lot of MGM Studios. Yep. The, they call it Colonial, it wasn't Colonial Street. Residential. Residential Street. Vern's house, you should be able to see from the tram, and that is where he, he pulls up and goes into Vern's house and all that. Fun fact, doing a little research on satellite view, going back to older images, if you walk into Oga's Cantina, Right when you walk into Oga's Cantina, you're walking into Vern's house, the filming location of Vern's house yeah. from Ernest Saves Christmas. When you found that out, he sent me a text message, told me, I was like, I just want to go there so I can walk into Vern's house. <laughs> no relation to Star Wars and ho, my ho, excitement. Ho, 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 ho Vern! <laughs> yeah. So when you're walking in Oga's at Batu East, you are walking in the same exact spot as the front door of Vern's house from Ernest Saves Christmas. Also on Disney Plus, we'll tie in. Now we made it over near the Orlando Science Center to the Shakespeare Center. And this almost looks like the type of crane they could have used probably to get some uh, some good angles there yeah. when Ernest is being filmed here. And this is where the climactic ending of the scene, the air brake scene and all that took place. And some of the interiors took place in here as well. And where Joe came back and decided he was going to be Santa Claus. Yeah, he shook the hands with Santa. Right over here, they did the handshake, and uh, all of a sudden, everything grew back. He had the Santa suit on, and the beard magically grew back. 
And there for posterity is the handshake from the old Santa to the new Santa. Right here in the little walkway in. There's the handshake spot right there. Just about kind of at that angle. And the thing is interesting, the air brakes part. So you got the handshake here, and then Ernest comes down from the heavens very quickly, and then <laughs> air brakes. <laughs> but the thing that's neat is behind Jim Varney's head, you can see the sphere at the Shakespeare Dome, yeah. which is lit up with Christmas lights in the film itself. And there's kind of a wide angle with the camera kind of over that direction, kind of getting a, a better view of the, the, the entire property itself or the air brake scene. As shown here, so there's the sphere, there's the entrance, there's Santa's sleigh going a complete perpendic perpendicular angle there. Reindeer nose almost touching the ground. Air brakes. And there's the angle of what it looks like modern day as of this very moment. Then the camera angle shifts to look down at all four of them, kind of how I was saying about the having the crane. They're kind of standing over at the entrance there. So if that crane was a little closer over to here, you'd be able to see the four of them standing right there. They were right kind of in the same spot right here. Now I'm noticing this, the Orlando sign is gone, but notice above Jim Varney's head here, the Christmas lights on those two little, there's like two roof lines. So you got the two rows of lights. That little two roof lines is still there. So see right up here, there's two sections that the lights were going across. One section there and one section directly above it. And they had That's a little- That's where the front desk was. Yep, yeah, little makeshift desk. Right there. Yeah, Santa. This is cool. Santa walks into the door right here. There's a Christmas tree in here. That's the door. I haven't been in here in like 10 years. Try to figure out where Joe's classroom was, where he was teaching and doing the puppet show. Do you remember where Joe's classroom was? Calm down. I know they walked down that hallway and I believe through those double doors. Hey, they were nice enough to let us in, but they said they're doing a rehearsal for a play because it is a, an area. So the doors down there, which we think is where Joe's office, Joe's room was that he was doing the, the puppet show and all that in, was down there through those doors. Now all this has been remodeled and it is the season. They have the- There's a tree in the middle the right there too. Oh, it's in that same spot? Yeah, look. For some reason, I was thinking the tree was over here. Mm -mm. Oh, it's over in that corner. Oh my gosh, that is in the same exact spot. So you got the door over there. It was just a single door, right? Yeah, single door. There's the spot. And the front desk over there. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, man, they should sell the movie in there on DVD. <laughs> Got one person to buy it. Yeah, we asked the, the people working at the front desk how many people come by. They said not too many. They said when people find out that the movie was filmed here, they're kind of surprised. And you see a lot of times there's like stuff happens right along this little sidewalk here as yeah. well. A number of different scenes take place right here where he's pulling up. Hey babe, park it in the shade, throws the keys over at the over at the mailman. Yep. And Micah was pointing out that these benches, most of them have been removed. But a lot of them you can see when they're doing the handshaking scene, there's like six or seven of these out front. And this is similar to that same era. Take a look down here, it even has Orlando carved on there. This looks like a lot more permanent than the ones. That's definitely the same era though. Yeah. Had the two and then they added another one. Hey, but the, the, the bottom part of that little seat, it's the same old. They used to be white. Now they were doing a little performance here, or practicing for the Shakespeare Center, but where Joe's puppet show took place, there was like a bookcase kind of against here, and you see these windows here, but it could be on the other side. I think it's that one. Could be that one right there. Right there, because it's on the... If he's standing in the back room, it's on his left. That's true, because when he, when they walk down the hallway this way, 
they turn in that way, That's it. past the fire hydrant, into the door, and you don't see those windows, you see a mural, which we asked the people working at the desk in there, the mural's been painted over, but they walk in, you see the mural, and then later they look this way at those windows where that bookcase is. Now looking at this, you can really do coordinate and definitely guarantees our opinion pretty much is correct because the mural is to the side of where this big window is and then there's this here, which is the longer window. So you have hallway there where they turn in, they go that way, painting against this wall, there's that long, almost like a door-shaped window, and then there's the top portion there, which matches up completely. So against this wall here, facing that way, is the mural. And you can peek in that window, and just to confirm, in that, that is the hallway they walked in. Was it the air brake scene using the trailer? I think that was like a big, either that maybe it just etched in my head. It's etched in my head too. That's like a big scene. Yeah. Air brakes. <laughs> We've now made it over to the Amtrak station, and it still looks exactly the same. We're in the general vicinity where Harmony Star was over here and walked across with Santa's sack walking across this way. And she had a change of heart inside the actual station itself. So we're gonna walk inside and see if the station still looks the same after all this time. But the angle from the movie was kind of that way, looking that way. This place is like stepping back in time, these seats here. There's also a scene here when the brother and sister are kind of arguing about Santa over here at Harmony Star comes walking out of this angle. You see this pillar right here and those kind of double doors and the windows and whatnot, as shown here. Still looks the same. The only difference is behind the pillar, there was like a little garden area now that's been bricked over. No plants there, or foliage there anymore. Just down here is the brick. And it is an active Amtrak station. Still have the retro telephone booths in here. Oh, over here is where this is where the lug. This is where she ended up getting the ticket here. Okay, that's pretty neat. And then there's an angle of her looking from here. So she goes up, gets the ticket, and then she's looking this direction, right about like that, as shown here. Yeah, a little bit of damage there, but this, so yeah. This is where she was sitting. It looks like the roof is leaking in here. Of course, the classic scene I always kind of think about is when she's really having regrets and second thoughts about, you know, what she's, what she's been doing. There's an angle here where the family, the brother and sister and mom, like that. Harmony's sitting there on the end, just like that. And the benches, the wood benches and everything. Oh my gosh, the Christmas tree is still in the same exact spot. Also, there's this here of her looking very, very sad, but notice the Christmas tree directly behind her. And modern day Christmas tree as well. Do you notice the Christmas trees over there too? It's still the same. Yeah, we need tinsel around that and it's covered. This is another image I always think of her sitting here. She has the leg up yeah, she's and she's there. like really regretting She's really regretting her decision. And the kids right there. Yeah, the family's right there. And this is the same ticket booth over yeah. here. It's pretty dang cool to be in here, especially after seeing the movie so many times. This scene in particular, knowing this scene, knowing that Harmony was there, having a change of thought, you know, starting to feel the Christmas joy and realizing she is making the wrong decision, revamping her her choices and then going back and taking Santa Claus's bag where it belongs.
couple other things I'm noticing if you watch the film. There is a staircase out here. This was the entrance. The entrance doors have changed. But as she turns this way, this is exactly the same counter, the same marble counter that is over there with the little window next to it. And current day, they do not even really use this window anymore. They use the other little side window adjacent to it. Yeah, this is the counter here. Pretty fascinating. Filming locations, love them. This is the same door she would have walked out of. Where do you get off? That's it. If that's Santa sack, then why do you have it? There's no such thing as Santa. Well, turd. This looks <laughs> exactly the same. It does. It's amazing. It's like stepping back in time, this place. Pillar's still there and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and do the outro right here. Yeah. That's gonna do it for today. From Orlando, Florida. Now, there were a couple key spots that we didn't go to. No. We did not go. We sound disappointed. <laughs> no, it's, it's <laughs> not that. It's, they're like two second spots. Right. So, MCO, Orlando International, really looks nothing the same. The only spot is when he kind of jumps up over the luggage, the, the taxi, you know, the, hits the ground, the we'll luggage kind of falls. No off. time. That scene. <laughs> And I'm trying to think what what other World one we, Drive. World Drive on the way to Epcot yep. was the very beginning of the movie. But I think we hit most of them. Oh yeah. More or less we hit most of them. And ending here with the the one that looks identical to how it was back in the day. It looks like 1926 up on the side of there. But we did it. We've been saying we want we've wanted to do the Ernest Saves Christmas spots together. Even though we've gone to the house an exorbitant amount of times. <laughs> We've finally gone to all the rest of them. Make sure you check out World of Micah, who has covered at least some of these spots on mo multiple occasions. Yeah. The house, at least a half a dozen times. Me, half a dozen times. <laughs> hey, there's not, there's not a whole heck of a lot filmed. Touchstone was a very brief time. Yeah. Hollywood East, as they wanted to call it, didn't last very long. There was Daryl, Parenthood. Problem Ernest. Child 2. Problem Child 2. Ernest. Am I missing any? That's a, probably about it. We don't have a lot of filming locations here in town, so we have to milk them for all they're worth. That's it. But check out World of Micah. He will have this video as well. Big Ernest guy, big Jim Varney guy like I am. Part of the many reasons we are friends, so check out his channel. YouTube Zone World of Micah. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. Know what I mean, Vern? I should also add, what, there's still one spot that Micah and I are in hopes of finding. And if we find that one day, we'll do another video. There's one spot that's the bucket list. The, uh, what do you, what's the word? The ultimate spot. It's the ultimate spot that no one has ever found. It'd be the martini shot. That's the final shot. It's like halfway, it's like three quarters through the movie, but no one's ever found it. So if we ever find it, yeah. we'll do a full video on that yeah. and milk this puppy for all it's worth. Minutes. 30 minutes of that one spot.